Okay. So, good morning. We're doing fat muscle and bone today. Tumors. So, Shane, you want to start us out? Um, sure. So we have what look like maxillary areas, and I think those are vessels rather than like rupee college. So you are correct that there are many vessels, but there's also ropey collagen. Okay. So you have myxoid, you have ropey collagen, you have vessels that are prominent. They're not particularly thin chicken wire type mm -hmm. vessels. So they're not the vessels you typically associate with sarcoma. These are little thicker vessels, suggest something that's been around a while. Don't see any, well, I see <laughs> much fat, but that's a lot of fat maybe. So, um, Steve Billings um, coined the terms low fat and non fat spindle cell lipoma for the ones with very little fat. And um, they have all of the usual components of myxoid, stroma, ropey collagen, fat, spindle cells. Um, this one has a little more prominent vasculature than you would normally see, but um, it is not a small vessel, chicken, chicken wire type of vasculature um, concerning for a sarcoma, so that helps. It's a smooth muscle proliferation. So smooth muscle proliferation, and did it come with dermis, or did it kind of shell out as a ball? It kind of shelled out as a ball. So what would be something that shells out as a ball Angel. is smooth muscle and has lumen? An angioliomyoma. Very good. Skin, and then we've got this. <laughs> and then you have this. I think skin is also a typical diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always feel like angio lipoma. So there's definitely an angio component, but what's what are these things? Mm -hmm. They look like acronym ducts. Um, Dr. Secretary unit. Uh, secretary. Yeah, so they look sort of like secretory unit. So, do you know any kind of adenolipoma? I uh, guess an adenolipoma. Yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> it. So, adenolipomas. Um, mm -hmm. The point with an adenolipoma is the normal secretory units sit here, right? Correct. So these aren't just trapped secretory units because it's way too deep. They have no business being down there. Right. Um, so it is a stem cell that's giving rise both to mesenchymal and to epithelial um, type of proliferation, kind of like what you would see in a mixed tumor. Mm. Um, so when you see an and adenolipoma, the, the differential is, um, the main differential is mixed tumor skin, because those are the two things that can have glandular elements and fat. Here there's nothing cartilaginous. Um, both are benign, so the difference probably doesn't matter that much. But, you know, you'd look for other features of mixed tumor of skin versus just an adenolipoma. Let's see, slides a little bit faded. But 
<laughs> yeah, maybe a little too faded. Yeah, like, yeah, like a nevus lipomatosis, <laughs> which is which is exactly what it was. Nevus lipomatosis, so um, polyp filled with filled with fat. And nevus lipomatosis um, looks pretty much like a e benign intradermal lipoma. That's pretty much what it is. Which is pretty much what it is, except that lipomas don't tend to be blaschoid in distribution, and NLS is often a, a strip of blaschoid-like distribution. So you see lots of proliferation of lots of blood vessels surrounding that fat. Like a, like this. Lots of blood vessels. Some of them are a little thicker. Most of them are capillary. They have little thrombi. So, an angiolipoma. Very good. So, a little bit of fat in there. So, a little bit of fat. What else is in there? Spindle cells. Spindle <laughs> cells. Do you know any kind of spindle cell lipoma? That one. That one. <laughs> So what other components are supposed to be there? Ropey collagen. Ropey collagen and myxoid stroma. And there is some myxoid stroma. And if you go closer, there is some ropey collagen. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that they can be in any proportion. So you saw one that was mainly myxoid stroma. This one is mainly spindle cells. And the components can be in any of those proportions. Yeah, so. And mast cells, anything with mucin is going to have mast cells. So anytime you see mast, anytime you have a myxoid tumor, you're going to have mast cells. Um, but you're absolutely right. They are a normal component. Um, for the very myxoid ones, sometimes there's a question of diffuse neurofibroma infiltrating the fat versus spindle cell lipoma. Um, the um, neurofibroma will be S100 positive, the spindle cell lipoma is CD30, CD34 positive. The one that can be a little tougher is the um, uh, DFSP versus a very, very spindle, spindle cell lipoma because both are CD34 positive. Sometimes you end up having to go to um, cytogenetics for those. Okay. So, Katie, what do you think? Large. Looks like it's pretty... can't really tell if it's just chopped up or if it's actually circumscribed. <coughs> so large and question, you know, did it really shell out or was it chopped out? This one may be more chopped out just Maybe. because the it's not so much round as flat on the edges like a suture cut, <coughs> or a scalpel cut, sorry. Pretty dense in terms of nuclei. So lots of nuclei, and what do the nuclei resemble? Look like smooth muscle. Look like smooth muscle. They're certainly blunt-ended like cigars, and when you look in cross-section, you see little paranuclear glycogen vacuoles or snacks the smooth muscle has to work for a living, so it carries its little glycogen snack in its back pocket. So what would be a large, very hypercellular smooth muscle tumor? Lyomyosarc. There's a lot of my tonic And they're, they're variable. So some can have a lot. There's also there's some debris on this that you know mimics dark mitoses. They're some mitoses here, there's one. Um, but you don't have to see a lot of mitoses there. Some, some others. You don't have to see a huge number of mitoses. You don't have to see a lot of pleomorphism, <coughs> but it has to be cellularity, number of nuclei much denser than you would expect in normal smooth muscle. What if you had something with a normal nuclear density just like normal smooth muscle, but high-grade atypia. What's that? 
So the number of nuclei is normal, no mitoses, but very high-grade nuclear atypia. Symplastic. Yeah, that's a benign symplastic lyomyoma. So symplastic lyomyoma is the same concept as ancient nevus, ancient neurofibroma. Normal cellularity, no mitoses, high-grade atypia, and their behavior is completely benign. And in the muscle world, they give it its own name, symplastic lyomyoma, although, you know, it's the same concept as ancient atypia. I see collagen, uh, bluish spindle cell component in fat, so probably a spindle cell lipoma. Yeah, and what's unusual about this is it's on the face, it's in the muscle, so you can get intramuscular lipomas. What's the most common place for an intramuscular lipoma on the face? Forehead. Yeah, so frontalis associated. And <laughs> so, Robbie, are those ones that are easy just to incise and pop out? Uh, no. Okay, and why is that? Because they're underneath, like you have to go through the muscle. Or yeah, they, and they can because be the easy. muscle's on both sides. So they're a form of intramuscular lipoma. And there are other intramuscular lipomas. Intramuscular lipoma is not that uncommon in tongue and frontalis muscle and other places. Here it's in um, other muscle of facial expression, and the intramuscular lipoma just happens to be a spindle cell lipoma. You have myxoid tissue, ropey collagen, mast cells, lipocytes. It just happens to be embedded in in muscle tissue. So it kind of has the pilolyomyoma look to it. A little so what makes it a pilolyomyoma look? It's not round, it's more spread out. Uh, not round, in fact it's spiky at the edges, yeah. right? It's been likened to the, the points on a pinwheel. Hmm. So a pinwheel-like configuration with little outward points, and it, other than that, is a little collection of smooth muscle, smooth muscle fascicles that in longitudinal section look cigar-shaped, and in cross-section you see the little glycogen snacks. So a little collection of smooth muscle high in the dermis, pinwheel-like points, pilolyomyoma. But this patient actually had a fair number of them. And they were you know, kind of in a blashkoid distribution on the flank. Anything associated? So anyone? Reed so Reed syndrome, fumarate hydratase, you actually can do immunohistochemistry for fumarate hydratase on the tumor, and then the association with reeds is yeah. renal cancer and it's renal papillary. How does that differ from something like Berthog Dubé? Those are renal oncocytomas. So, you know, different tumor in the renal papillary or <coughs> higher grade carcinomas. Okay. Is it just the pilo that are associated with that? It is just pilo. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. So people can have multiple scrotal or you know genital or angio, and they're not associated. <laughs> um, but the other ones that are associated is uterine. <laughs> uterine. So uterine and cutaneous lyomyomas. So very high cellularity, kind of maybe in fascicles, but more like spindle, spindle cells. Yeah. So high cellularity, spindle cells, somewhat in fascicles, and yeah, when you... They look kind of bad. So. And are they Likely. tapered or are they blunt-ended? Mm -hmm. blunt -ended. And in cross-section, do you see little glycogen vacuoles? Do. So you have little glycogen vacuoles. Did we lose our... Oh, there it is. Okay. So you have little glycogen vacuoles, so it looks like smooth muscle, 
But you commented on the increased cellularity. So this is Lyomyosarc. And you know, there, some soft tissue pathologists call them atypical dermal smooth muscle tumor because their prognosis is good, but it's no different from DFSP and other cutaneous sarcomas that are low grade and locally infiltrative, but with a low tendency to metastasize. Um, if they invade the sub Q, they have a much higher risk of metastasis. The, um, but they all have some risk. So the series for Mayo has shown the, um, even the dermal ones have, they're not without risk of, of metastasis. So the, oh, good, okay. So the, um, you know, calling them a sarcoma is justified. Um, angiolipoma. So, looks probably like some kind of variant of lipoma. Okay. It's not very well organized. It has vessels. It also has a fair number of spindle cells. So, so yeah, so maybe a tiny spindle cell lipoma. There's ropey collagen, a little bit of myxoid tissue, some spindle cell. This is one where you might also think of DFSP because it's sort of long, looks like something that may be running down a septum. So this is one where your differential is probably DFSP versus spindle cell lipoma. And unless you can make out nice myxoid areas with ropey collagen, you might end up with cytogenetics on this one because both will be CD34 positive, they actually have a lot of overlap in IHC markers. So, you know, when it's a big lump on the upper back, it's easy. When it's like that and infiltrating into, into the septum, it may not be as easy. Um, so it's like cartilage? Yeah, it looks like cartilage. So do you know any kind of cartilage tumor in skin? A chondroma. Like a chondroma. Um, there are also, there's um, osteochondroma, which is a cartilaginous cap on bone, like subungual exostosis. If you, this is a little big for that, but you know, if you just nip off the cartilage on the top, that's also in the differential. Um, this actually, by history, was top of an osteochondroma. It looks more like just a cutaneous chondroma. Difference is one connects to skin and the other doesn't. Or, I'm sorry, one connects to bone and the other doesn't. It's like a lyomyoma. Like a lyomyoma, and you don't really see the edge, so you can't make out the pinwheel point so much but it looks like smooth muscle, well circumscribed. How do you know it's not a lyomyosarc? Um, it doesn't look very hypercellular. Yeah, the cellular density is about the same as smooth muscle. And if multiple associated with? A uh, Reed syndrome. You said mixoid. In some areas, that, that area not so much. So this area looks more... I mean, there's definitely like a vascular proliferation, some vessels, there it is. Um, trying to make out what these cells are. So where does the wall of the vessel end? Or does it not end, does it just become the tumor? Looks like it just kind of becomes a tumor. So, okay. if you have lumens, like an angioliomyoma, like an angioliomyoma, but you had the areas that at scan you thought were 
mixoid. Some of that is just edematous, and some of it is <coughs> fat. fat. So what would be a tumor that looks kind of like an angiomyoma but also has fat? Um, angio angiomyolipoma. Angiomyolipoma. And do angiomyolipomas in skin have any association? In skin, no. How about in kidney? In kidney, it would be um, tuber sclerosis. Correct. Maybe. So multiple angiomyolipomas in the kidney, they tend to crush the kidney like polycystic kidney disease does. You get renal failure. It's one of the really bad things that happens to patients with tuberous sclerosis. You know, the two worst things that can happen to you with TS is the pulmonary lyomatosis where you end up with a lung transplant because your lungs can't diffuse oxygen because they're full of the smooth muscle. And that's almost always young women with a family history of tuberous sclerosis, but they themselves only have the lung disease. They sort of get that one bad manifestation of the disease. And then the other bad thing that happens is you lose your kidney function because of these multiple benign angiomyolipomas that crush your kidney. But the ones in skin have no association with tuberous sclerosis. Important to know so you don't um, go running down the, the wrong path. Oh, I see a lot of fat. A lot of fat. So Anything that like strikes you about the fat? Um, it's not all the same size. There, there's lipocytes. Some are really big and some are really small. When you see lipocytes where some are really big and some are really small, what are you supposed to think of? Necrosis. So fat necrosis would be one thing if it's a lobular paniculitis, but in a muscle, or in a um, fat tumor, does that make you think of good things, bad, bad things? things? So why don't you call on a consult from one of the fellows? Liposarc and in particular <coughs> ALT, which is atypical lipomatous tumor. And so in ALT, you look by the septum and you start to see, do you have some large atypical cells sitting in the septum? They're usually not many in number and you're more likely to find them right at the edge of the septum. So here's a septum and you see that right at the edge. Um, you might occasionally have some signet ring or mulberry lipoblasts, a few atypical cells near the edge of a septum, and then any immunostains, or there are ways other than IHC to look for it, but any markers that you would look for? MDM2 or CDK4 are the common markers for atypical lipomatous tumor, and it behaves, it's basically synonymous with low-grade, well-differentiated angiosarcoma. So they tend to be large retroperitoneal tumors or deep in the deep soft tissues of proximal extremity, but you will occasionally see ALTs that occur, occur superficially in the dermis, and not that uncommonly you'll sort of nip the top of it. It's burrowing up to the surface, and so the top of it gets biopsied. And, you know, on imaging, you see that there's actually a huge soft tissue mass there, but it comes in as the tip of the iceberg to the derm path lab. So ALT, or atypical lipomatous tumor, 
which is a low-grade liposarc. The tip-off at scan is similar to the scan of a lobular paniculitis. You've got big circles and small circles, but there's no necrosis. It's actual lipocytes that are big and small. And then you look for the atypical cells near the septum, and you send for the MDM2 CDK4. Nuclear cytoplasmic ratio, but it's not looking to me mostly. Yeah, so high nuclear cytoplasmic ratio certainly gets you concerned. How might you describe the cells? The shape of the cells. Are they long? They kind of all blend into each other. And I might, you know, if I had to characterize it, I might characterize it as just a round blue cell tumor. Is this the myoparasitoma? So, so myoparasitomas usually make um, whorls around the central lumen. But this, so this is a big round blue cell tumor. And when you look at them, um, just occasional ones, you've got a round cell, and then next to it, you've got a pink blob. It's a so you are correct, it's a rhabdomyosarc. So of the round blue cell tumors, so round blue cell tumors are everything from Merkel to um, Ewing sarcoma, uh, primitive neuroectodermal tumor, um, um, neuroblastomas, small cell endocrine carcinomas, um, rhabdomyosarcomas, all of those things can be small blue cell tumors. One of the things that helps is you get these pink blobs, which are an attempt to make smooth or um, muscle fibers, in this case, striated muscle fibers. So you have a pink blob in the cytoplasm with a peripheral nucleus. That's called a strap cell or um, rhabdomyoblast, or just rhabdoid differentiation. Rhabdoid differentiation in a small blue cell, small round blue cell tumor is usually rhabdomyosarcoma. Rhabdoid differentiation in something anaplastic in skin is usually what? Melanoma. Melanoma. So that rhabdoid morphology, eccentric nucleus, big pink cytoplasm in a small round blue cell tumor makes you think of striated muscle tumor malignant in an anaplastic tumor. Yeah, okay. In an anaplastic tumor, um, rhabdoid makes you think of melanoma. So, this is, it is, it is the entity we were talking about. It's maybe not the world's prettiest example. Where it tips its hand is right here. So you have a central vessel, and then it's around this little muscular vessel. It's all of these cells on the outside that are forming whorls around it. Sometimes they're rounder, plumper. These are a little more spindled, makes it a little harder. But you can see if that's the vessel, and that's the muscle, and these things don't stain like muscle, then they would be the pericytes that are out at the periphery, right? So the pericytes are outside the muscle. So here you can see central vessel, the muscle, and the muscle is normal the tumor is composed of these cells outside the muscle. It can be plump or spindled. So that's a myopericytoma. So the pericytes that are proliferating outside around the muscle. So for those online, there's the central muscular vessel 
and then it's these pericytes on the outside that become the tumor, the myoparasitoma. So at the scan, it has somewhat of a, a bad appearance in terms of pleomorphism and cellularity. Um, it does seem to be almost encapsulated, though, but at least well circumscribed. Uh, I'd be favoring a lot of myosarcoma. There is fat in there, though. There's also some, I mean, it could be a pleomorphic lipoma. And you certainly have high-grade atypia here, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you're thinking of the possibility of sarcoma, pleomorphic lipoma, the fat vastly outnumbers the number of atypical <coughs> nuclei. Here you have solid areas with atypical nuclei outnumbering fat cells. So, you know, that helps you rule out pleomorphic lipoma. There's just too much of the solid pleomorphic area. Pleomorphic lipoma, you know, might be better named big fatty lipoma with scattered pleomorphism. Um, so here, you know, you have fat, you would look to see is all the fat the same size or do you have big ones and little ones? If you have big ones and little ones, that's a hint that the, the fat may not just be trapped but may actually be part of the differentiation of the tumor. And then you'd look for lipoblasts focally and that it could be a hint that this is actually a fatty derived tumor and this is a very, very cellular liposarc. Um, liposarcomas, usually you can make out a really good chicken wire vascular pattern, but when, the, um, when they become very solid like that, it may be hard because you don't see the vessels very well in the in the solid cellular areas. Okay, how about this? So, most of this looks like mature fat. Most of it looks like mature fat. Uh, the septae don't look too terribly thickened. Um, I'd want to go... Some of those guys look big and dark. So you have some big, dark nuclei, and are they solitary nuclei? No, or they're multinucleated. Some of them even look floretish and flower-like. Some of them look floretish. Okay. So, um, if it was in the right location and with the right age and gender, I'd feel comfortable probably calling it a pleomorphic lipoma. Okay. Um, I so don't think it would be wrong to do MVM2 to make sure it's not... So you're absolutely correct that you know, your differential would be a low-grade liposarcoma versus just pleomorphic lipoma. If it's well-circumscribed, lump, superficial, in an old person's upper back, that's a pleomorphic lipoma. If this is a deep, huge, retroperitoneal tumor, I'm thinking probably not pleomorphic lipoma, right? The arborizing vascular pattern may help you between the two. The lipocytes... Here the lipocytes are pretty even, but you could maybe talk yourself into some being a little larger, some being a little smaller. So you're absolutely right. If there's any question, just go ahead and get the markers that we have that help to differentiate the two. So it looks like you have some solid areas and edematous areas. So solid areas and edematous areas. And the solid areas are composed of? Like smooth muscle. Yeah, so you might think smooth muscle, so you put a stain and they're not smooth muscle. In fact, they're CD34 positive. And then you have all this mucin. Is it like a spinal cell lipoma? So that's the question. It's, you know, it's a little maybe. You could talk yourself into storiform. 
and it's CD34 positive, so could it be DFSP? So tell me about the nuclear morphology. Is this the nuclear morphology of a DFSP, or does it vary it from varies. that? So what's the difference? What does DFSP nuclei look like? Um, they are... Or what do they look like? Small, or not small, but they're like really dark. So they're alternating fascicles of large and gray, small and dark, because okay. it's a disc-like nucleus that's either viewed on FOS or on side, and that's in alternating fascicles. And here you don't have that pattern. So that tells you, you know, maybe this is just spindle cell lipoma rather than um, liposarc. It certainly has fat. and um, this one, you know, you could maybe talk yourself into a little bit of a chicken wire vascular pattern. You would definitely want to know the size, how superficial this was. The vessels make me also think about solitary fibrous tumor. SFT <laughs> is also CD34 positive. They can be down in fat. They usually don't have so much fat within them as this does. And less likely to have ropey collagen in the myxoid areas, but solitary fibrous tumor, you know, absolutely belongs in the differential for um, a CD34 positive cellular lump down in the dermis. There's some lymphoid aggregates. I'm concerned about desmoplastic melanoma. Yeah, that's probably a very good place to start is desmoplastic melanoma because you've got something spindle cell in the dermis that's kind of subtle, but you have lymphoid aggregates. So desmoplastic melanoma would be absolutely where you would want to start. And then if it's not, if they don't stain... S100 positive, you can see this one actually has long cigar-shaped nuclei and little vacuoles, right? So probably more smooth muscle. So smooth muscle. So this is, you know, a sneaky desmoplastic leiomyosarcoma. Um, but you did absolutely the right thing. You know, thinking desmoplastic melanoma first when you have uh, a um, s spindle cell neoplasm with um, with lymphoid aggregates. So spindle cell neoplasm lymphoid aggregates, think of desmoplastic melanoma first. And then if it's not that, then start looking for other things. So this looks like um, an aerogen and a hair follicle, um, almost looking appearance to it. Um, and then there's this, you know, bone around it, so it looks like, like osteoma cutis a little bit in there. So osteoma cutis, and do you know any kind of osteoma cutis that originates in a hair follicle? Like, yeah, ones you have from acne scarring. Yeah. Kind of and do those tend to be solitary? No, you tend to have, like, a multiple. multiple. So when you feel their face, it feels like their face is just full of birdshot, and they tend to be gray. So, you know, they're visible. It's a lumpy, bumpy, hard face, and they're gray, and the patients absolutely hate them, and they're often there by the hundreds to the thousands after healed acne. And so how do you treat them? <laughs> yeah, they're kind of deep to get at with CO2. The best results that I've had, and it really works well, is you take an 11 blade and you make a tiny little stab wound over each one. So you have to emla the face first, and then you do a tiny little stab wound and you go in with a little trocar needle and you just grab it and pop it out. And you end up um, with a, you know, a jar full of these tiny little shot-like BBs and it takes hours and hours and hours to do them 
but you will never have a more grateful patient you will ever meet. And so usually what we did is you train one of your nurses, mm -hmm. you know, they, they see you doing several and you supervise several and that way they can work very patiently because these patients take three and four hours. And that's about all you can do. Um, it, it's probably legitimate for, I mean, you, you can't do excision of benign for all of those. You're never going to get paid for it. A lot of insurance doesn't pay for acne surgery anyway. We, our patients just paid out of pocket. Yeah, and it's, you know, if you worked it out, they were probably paying more five cents per. <laughs> so, sometimes you do it just because it's the right thing to do. So this looks like mostly fat with some collagen, like a fiber -like so fat with some collagen, like a, like maybe a fiber lipoma. Anything else in here? They're large nuclei. And are they solitary nuclei or multinucleate? Multi. And do some of them kind of form a ring? Yes. <coughs> like a flower? It's like pleomorphic fiber like lipoma succule. Like... <laughs> maybe a pleomorphic lipoma. So the pleomorphic lipomas have a background that can be myxoid, can be fibrous, just like a spindle cell lipoma when it finally grows up and all the collagen matures becomes a fibrolipoma. Um, same thing with pleomorphic lipomas, but those florette-like giant cells look in the background. I don't see chicken wire like vasculature you still want to be very careful that you're not looking at a pleomorphic liposarcoma. You do have some larger and smaller liposites. I'd be very careful of size, location, age, all of those things. Looks like a hibernoma. So <laughs> multivacuolated fat cells with a central nucleus that is round, not <laughs> scalloped. So how does brown fat differ from a lipoblast? In a lipoblast, the nucleus is scalloped. In brown fat, the nucleus is round. Okay, so this is brown fat, not lipoblast. So once again, lipoblast, the nucleus is scalloped. Brown fat, the nucleus is round. So this is a benign tumor of brown fat, which is a hibernoma. In the dermis, looks like maybe some bone deposition. Like some bone associated with? Like a neutrophilic infiltrate. And the neutrophilic infiltrate is probably associated with? With a, like a follicle. Like a follicle, so what do you think so this is? Would it be like acne? It's yeah, like healed acne forming? Osteomacutus. Osteomacutus, how are you going to treat them? Um, with a, an electric blade, and <laughs> pop it out, and then yeah. maybe try to build a fragment. Yeah. <laughs> or Not have the patient pay out of pocket. Out of pocket, yeah. A lot of yeah, a lot of insurance just does not cover it. Um, looks like a smooth muscle proliferation. And what do you think about the configuration at the edge? It's kind of pinwheelish. Like pinwheelish. <laughs> and so what are you thinking? Pilotizer. Any associations? Uh, Reed syndrome. Very good. What does Reed syndrome get? They get that uterine. And then they get papillary renal cancer. Freeway Very good. 
Needless lipomatosis superficialis. Oh. Hoffman and Zarelli. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> so, needless lipomatosis superficialis of Hoffman and Zarell. How would you tell the difference between uh, this and Goltz? Uh, clinical history. So clinical history would be huge, right? You know, do they have claw hands, missing <laughs> eyes, pe- yeah. um, <laughs> missing <laughs> teeth, all the various things that happen with golds. Um, also, are you <coughs> male or female? Because very few um, males can survive with golds. It's typically lethal in male unless you're mosaic. Um, so golds would always be a female pretty much, whereas NLS is 50-50 chance. Um, Both can be blashcoid, though. If you see them very early in their genesis, Goltz is perivascular fat. So although the old name for Goltz syndrome was focal dermal hypoplasia, it's not a hypoplasia of the dermis, it's a neogenesis of fat that starts perivascular and starts to fill the dermis. So pretty dense uh, hypercellular proliferation. There's some myxoid areas. Um, it's kind of spindle cell, but then a closer look, they, they kind of look more blunt, cigar shaped, with little uh, perinuclear halos. So definitely looking like smooth muscle. There's um, with the dense cellularity and, and maybe some atypia. I'd be worried about another leiomyosarcoma. And could be some plastic, but um. yeah, but there were mites present, and it's pretty hypercellular. So I agree with Lyomyosarc. Um, is this a pilo Lyomyosarc? No, it's too deep. And so, what's it? It's more like an angio. And what is the prognosis of an angio Lyomyosarc? Worse. Worse because it's right there on the. The vessels are part of it, right? It's right attached to the vessel. It's got ready access to the bloodstream. And when they spread, it's you know not shockingly, usually hematogenous spread, not lymphatic. So worse prognosis because they're you know they're right there. They originate in the muscle. Let's see what else? I'm gonna try to go for I yield things. So uh, it looks mammillated and polypoid. You have some hair follicles in it, so it's not a skin tag. So it's not a skin tag, and how big are the hair follicles? Small, like vellus, so it could be an accessory tragus. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's likely what it is. So you may see the cartilage in it, or you may not see the cartilage. But it's got lots of tiny, tiny little hairs, just like ear skin. So accessory tragus, very good. Where do you think you are, first off? Acral skin. Acral skin, and what are you seeing? Um, maybe like a wet-shaped subungual osseosis, or exostosis yeah. coming out. So it has its cartilaginous cap, and then the bone. So subungual exostosis is the same as an osteochondroma. So if it happens on your greater trochanter, you call it an osteochondroma. If it happens on your great toe, you call it subungual exostosis. It's the same thing. You just treat that with removal? Um, treat that with removal? Yeah. You, you basically chisel it off. Is that something we can do? Yeah. Can I get an x-ray first, please? Um, yeah, you typically, you know, you've got a subungual mass, and you get an x-ray, and it's just a osteochondroma or subungual exostosis, and yes, you can chisel them off. So you or podiatry or ortho, pretty much anyone can. Has a spindly, almost smooth muscle look to it. Yeah, like so it's a ball of smooth muscle and the skin's kind of rugose. Yeah. And when you look away from the smooth muscle, the skin still has smooth muscle. Yeah. It's just that there's a lot more smooth muscle. Okay. 
There. So what kind of lyomyoma is this? Um, or what kind of skin is rugose oh, okay. with lots of nerve, lots of vessel, lots of little wisps of smooth muscle? Like nipple? Or yeah, nipple. nipple or genital. So anogenital type, scrotal, dartos type okay. muscle. And so this would be a genital lyomyoma. And the genital type, um, you know, you can get them very similar on the breast. You can also get them more commonly vulvar or scrotal. Let's see. So, a lot like cartilage in here. Looks a lot like cartilage. Is it well differentiated like cartilage though? It's not, and there's mixoid areas in there as well. So what would a less well differentiated cartilaginous tumor make you worry about? Okay. Yeah, it's like a chondrosarc, exactly. Whereas a benign chondroma <coughs> looks, they can be the piece you get may be the same size, but it's all well differentiated cartilage. So this is a benign chondroma. The other one has more immature areas, which makes you worried then about chondrosarc. Uh, smooth muscle hamartoma. Okay, smooth muscle hamartoma looks like normal erector pili, but it just keeps on going. There's too much of it. What would that look like clinically? Becker's nevus. Probably a lot like a Becker's nevus because they're pretty much two ends of the same spectrum. Kind of lipoma. Um, some of them look a little bit atypical, so question mark on lipoma, but it's blood vessel. Blood vessel, and then what's surrounding the blood vessel? Um, looks like sort of a spindle cell. I like think the wall keeps sort of going. Yeah, the wall keeps going, and the whole thing is kind of shells out like a marble. So I get angiolipoma. Angio. Angiolipoma. Or myolipoma. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, for some reason, you know, it's like an angiolipoma, but for some reason they put the fat, or they put the myo before the lipo. So um, angiomyolipoma. Um, and those, this came from a kidney, and there were 20 of them. But I lied, this came from the skin, and there was one. Nothing. Okay. So no association with solitary and skin. And so SLAM includes what? Um, spindle cell, melanoma, lyomyosarc, AFX, and... Uh, spindle squame. squame. Yeah. Oh, yeah, squame. Okay. And yeah. this squame one... Squame and then melanoma. <laughs> I got a reversion. See all the little <laughs> vacuoles in here? Right. So you think more of like a lyomyosarc? Like a lyomyosarc, and this thing looks kind of like a BB because it's actually a bat. So this is metastasis from a lyomyosarc. So some fat um, with mixoid areas. 
It's got fat, mixoid areas. What are all these little strandy things in there? Ropey collagen. Like ropey collagen, and so you're thinking? Spindle cell lipoma. Like spindle cell lipoma, very good. Does that usually get mixoid areas, though? Mm, I don't know about usually. So, usually not. So when you see the mixoid areas, it probably is in intradermal spindle cell lipomas. Just like some nevus lipomatosis is intradermal lipoma, um, blashcoid, so it's a you know probably a genetic defect giving you a lipomatosis in a in a blashcoid distribution, and then when they have the mixoid areas, it's an intradermal spindle cell lipoma. Accessory breast tissue, or could be from uh, biopsy from the breast area. Yeah, and that's you know exactly what this was is an accessory breast, and it was um, they're most commonly axillary when they occur, um, but they can be anywhere along the milk line, and you can have not just an accessory nipple, but a whole accessory breast, which then has the um, the fatty component with it. Um. So it's like pomodus. So it's like Some of them look bigger and smaller than others. Some of them have little vacuoles in them. Yeah, lots of little vacuoles. It's not great, but they almost remind me of like brown fat. A little exactly. Bit with how they're and when you look at the nuclei, are the nuclei nope, scalloped or are they round? round? Small and round. So this yeah. is a big, funny hibernoma rather than a big, scary liposarc. And the shape of the nucleus is your clue. How are we time wise? That's it. We're done. Well done. So they're, you know, they're the ones that are bread and butter derm, and they're the ones that overlap with soft tissue. They are more likely to get the ones that are bread and butter derm. They are more likely to get the ones that overlap with soft tissue, obviously. Can you guys finish with that? Yep. Okay. I'm going to be calling a lot of...